Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash home and podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from, from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Thanks, Audible, and let's get into the episode. Uh-oh. Home and Podcast Time. That's right. Binford Tools is proud to present a Home Improvement Podcast. My name is Adam. You all know my co-host, Jordan. What's up, Adam? What's up, Jordan? How are you today? I am good. I got the ribs in the oven. I got the sweet potatoes in the oven. And we're about to put this podcast in the oven. Do, do, do. <laughs> bring in the heat. You, bring in the heat. You said you were a little, um, I don't know. I think the what word, word I probably use? said was tired. You were tired. Yeah, yeah. We're you're used to just like waking up and uh, I typically you got some... record on we typically record on Fridays. Fridays, uh, I do not. You get a dock in in the morning, or you have some sort of meeting. Some yeah, documentary yeah. Stuff. I, I take care of some one stuff. of your many roles. Yeah, I wear many hats. None of them fit especially well, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Today I, I did. Uh, I, I've 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 worked today, and I, I've taught a couple of classes this morning, and uh, I'm a little bit fried, but uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's gonna be loose then, huh? Right. Yeah, you know. Uh, we're talking. We're talking home improvement today uh, on a Wednesday, <laughs> like every other day. Yeah, basically, like most like most times when we record, we're talking about home improvement. You know, we'll throw in a, a b- 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 bonus app every now and then, uh, like our upcoming Man of the House, Man of the House, which you watched and I haven't. And uh, I had some hot takes that you weren't you ready said, for. You gave, so. you gave me. A, I asked you your opinion. You gave me a one sentence kind of. I don't want to say anything. We don't want to spoil it. But you, your opinion on it was different than I might have suspected. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to watch it soon and we're recording, uh, on, on Friday and I'd ask for questions, Jordan, from, from our fan base. Mm-hmm. You got, I don't think we'd get them. Uh, you wait, you, I mean, we got a couple for the last one yeah. before, like yeah. jungle to jungle and stuff. After so months maybe of pleading. Yeah. We actually had to pay for those questions. <laughs> yeah, those, oh, those are made up <laughs> with fake names. Like it's when usually... Victor Oladipo, uh, I think yeah. sent us an email. Yeah, Richard Sherman's gonna write some for this yeah. next upcoming thing. So that's uh, but nice. yeah, I'm doing well. Happy to be talking to you. Uh, be uh, be heading down to Florida pretty soon, and uh, mm. looking forward to that as well. Mm. Yeah, get ready for some live behind the scenes footage. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, are you any taller than you used to be? Shorter. Used to be. I keep okay, shrinking. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I keep interesting. Shrinking. I know you used to be kind of small. <laughs> uh, you know who's not small? Who and is actually like a pretty big star? Tim Allen. No. Yeah, I, I thought so. he was yeah. kind of under the radar. No, 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 no. You, you mistake, you're mistaken. <laughs> you're mistaken. Uh, and Tim Allen, you know, See, you he's know such him a from... big star that when he says nothing, they turn it into an Entertainment Tonight story. Do you want to do? His, do you want to do IMDb credits, Tim Allen? Or do we not need to do that? <laughs> so, Let's just do Tim... Paul Paul Tompkins again. Paul Tompkins, uh, Tim Allen in the news recently. Uh, this was uh, shared to us via Facebook, tweet, tweet. Uh, this is an article from ET Online, uh, and here's the title. The title is essentially the article. I would say there's not a lot in the article that the title doesn't give you. Tim Allen says he's, quote, very interested in a home improvement reboot. And this is an exclusive, they're calling it. <laughs> I don't know Why? how they define exclusive, but that's what they have. Uh, and the article is about as nothing as it could possibly be. Basically, someone asked Tim Allen if he'd be up for a home improvement reboot, and he's like, "Sure, yeah, I'm pretty interested in that," which <laughs> is not a surprise to me. You know that he would want to do return to the most popular thing he's ever done, or Some, one of the most something popular he used things to get like twenty five million dollars to do. Yeah, you know when he's the biggest star on TV, it's weird he'd want to return to that. Uh, the article mentions, you know, like a lot of reboots have have occurred of late. The Roseanne one, for whatever reason, seems to. Ever since people found out about this Roseanne rebooter, it's been getting traction. Like I feel like that has, for whatever reason, given I more guess credence maybe to they're a home improvement. Th- maybe they're rebuild. thinking like Roseanne's such a low bar that like home improvement could totally clear that. Is that? What I it? think people are. I what I worry about is people are associating Roseanne with home improvement, and I don't like that because mm. home improvement home improvement is is considerably more classy than an episode of Roseanne, uh, and I, I don't I don't appreciate. 
And I feel like there's maybe some Trump ties that are getting <laughs> kind of thrown together here as well, because that's that's the that's like what the Roseanne thing's going to be is like she's going to be the first person on TV to be like pro Trump. So uh, I am resentful of any kind of uh, comparisons there, but people are are making them, and it's it's uh, leading people to believe that yeah, there might be a reboot. Uh, basically, Tim... He also doesn't... said that he'd like to revisit the Last Man Standing character, so I'm sure he would like to revisit any character, really. Yeah, do you think he might want to make another Santa Claus movie, too? Probably. <laughs> I is, mean, like, why, why wouldn't you? Isn't there, like, a Toy Story 9 coming out? I think, I mean, hey, you're Mr. Disney, but, Jordan, I think it's just four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you get the idea. Are they gonna call it Four Story? They should, right? <sighs> Boy, you're gonna have to talk to Pixar. Yeah, I... I you got some ties there. I, when I was, uh, yeah, I took an online class. <laughs> when Despicable Me 3 came out, I just couldn't believe they didn't call it Despicable 3. And now I'm wondering why they wouldn't call it 4 Story. So, yeah, get at me. You know, uh, that, my Twitter handle is, uh, you know, it's on our Twitter page as well. So I, I, I'm, I'm good for ideas like this. Um, this article is not good for any real ideas, <laughs> I wouldn't say. <laughs> I mean, he basically, he's like, yeah, I, I would. I haven't talked to anybody else yet, though. Yeah, so. he didn't want to speak for anybody else, which is nice of him, I guess. Uh, but yeah. is the exclusive the fact that like they asked him the question and he answered it while he was on their camera? Is that it? I guess so. Yeah, I guess. All right. Well, uh, good for ET for getting that exclusive footage on. Does that mean that we, when Richard Carn came on our podcast, that, that was we an got, exclusive? Like, we got we got a couple of exclusives. Yeah, we, we did some... not play that up enough, apparently. Even though we, we ran ads and posted we it everywhere, we should have created we should have created a page with a bunch of clickbait that loaded really slow and had uh, <laughs> videos that videos that, that start on anime. Yeah, yeah. Be great. I am starting to think that maybe we should just post any sort of uh, home improvement related news on our blog. And, call it uh, exclusives. Call it exclusives. Maybe get some uh, nice SEO bumps and some Yeah, links. I mean, you know, exclusives are big right now. You can get featured with your tweets, but we haven't got featured with our um, with our website yet. So we got to get some traction there. Indeed, yeah. Uh, in terms of what we want to see in a reboot, well... <laughs> <laughs> funny you should ask. Well, funny you should ask because uh, Jordan and I have decided to make it our mission that we are going to uh, we're gonna write a spec script for an upcoming reboot. Uh, line by line, scene by scene, baby. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be official. Twenty two pages, uh, with uh, gonna pick up right where the finale left off. And uh, in terms of when that's gonna be finished, I don't know. Give us like a year, maybe. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, at the at the end of the podcast. A year, two years. I don't know. I mean, if, uh, we both said before we started that we. I mean, at least I'm feeling confident that a reboot will happen i just kind of feel i just have a feeling that they're going to try to bring it back the momentum is just pushing it pushing that way so our our own reboot script will probably come after that but we are going to uh put the pen to to paper uh as it were and uh try to try to come up with something so Mm -hmm. you know we feel qualified i've watched uh, (laughs) we watch a lot of home improvement uh yeah i mean we we've definitely put in some time with the angles that they try to draw on the show and some of the jokes so i think we can definitely replicate that and maybe one up it yeah i think we should open on like an obscure like the reboot should kind of like open on something very strange that is very specific to a certain like season two or season three episode <laughs> like you know that it opens and he's at uh, Big Mike's Tavern and there's like a picture of Jack Elam framed kind of eating a stinky and you just kind of focus on that for I a while. I think we should and, uh, open... And then Marty's outside leering, uh, waiting for <laughs> Tim to leave. <laughs> Either that or we open at like that uh, memorabilia shop with like <laughs> the broken uh, the broken toy is like framed or something. And, and then we, we cut to that gas station that they end up uh, in an Ohio and oh. then, you know, it's just... It's like a it's like a carousel of progress, uh, <laughs> different locations. Yeah, it's a carousel it's weird that of progress. I brought up carousel of progress twice in the podcast. I know. I, I guess you... like the only ride I know at Disney. Well, know. it's one of the best, so that's good yeah. to know it. But speaking uh, of one of the best, <laughs> uh, should we talk about this this week's episode? Let's go to the videotape. Well, let's go to the videotape. Let's go to the episode. Uh, this episode, written by Howard J. Morris, last wrote "Don't Tell Mama," aired November eighth, nineteen ninety four. I toned down my alternative titles. I went from five down to three. Um, okay, I did the opposite. I have four. Okay, well, why don't you... Um, well, yeah, uh, I want to read the trivia before that. Can I read yeah. the trivia? Okay, mm-hmm. so yeah. the trivia says, The title is based on the expression that local newsmen and sports reporters used when first describing an event, then showing the video clip, i.e., let's go to the videotape. 
Uh, I that, did some research, and is it's that like, trivia? Tri- yeah, I mean that's not. It's a trivia to do. Like, there's a certain guy uh, called Warner Wolf that that penned the phrase, I mm. guess, and he's a he's a sportscaster from from DC. So what they have is not actually actual trivia. It's like, well, I mean, it's like half trivia. It's kind of lazy, but yeah, it is based on. An Can you update guy. the uh, IMDb and then like yeah, for sure. cite our for podcast sure. or something? So yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Get some credit. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, I guess I'll let you lead off then, since you got four alternative times. All right, let's go to the videotape, a.k.a. on the record. Hmm. I've got locker room talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think, that the, I think that this is an actual episode title of Home Improvement or close to it, but double, double, tape and trouble. Yeah, there was the toil or something in trouble. Or yeah, something. yeah, that's not bad. I don't, that's yeah, fine. Sorry. Smile, you're on candid camera. That's a good one. This one doesn't really relate to this episode, but I <laughs> thought of it, and it's kind of clever, and I just wanted to use this before I forgot it. Battle of the sexist. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Got to use it sometime. Yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> it seems to apply to many episodes. Yeah, I mean, every episode could really be titled. All right, my too. last one is clinical transgression. Okay, my last one is. VC, are you going to apologize? <laughs> I call this a bounce back week for me. I say it. you do a lot of those uh, turning <laughs> R's into a, a question. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, uh, kind of a strong suit of yours. So yeah. All right. Yeah. Plot synopsis written by Skagari sixty six. Uh, after Tim attends an address, Jill gives it a seminar. <laughs> what? What? Uh, <laughs> Come on, Skagari. He accidentally videotapes himself at the hardware store making fun of her speech. So, um, I guess I'm going to have to start vetting these synopsis. After Tim attends an address, Jill gives it a... I mean, he's referring... So, address, <laughs> like... I mean, that's like a the statement. Gettysburg, the, there's the Gettysburg address, and there's what Jill did at that Royal Oak Library. <laughs> Flip side, the same coin. I didn't realize it was a seminar. I didn't know she was teaching people stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that it didn't. She seminar did. was not the word that they used in the episode, but you never know what's. As long is. as it wasn't a library fundraiser, I'm all for it. It's a little. I mean, we'll talk about it, but yeah, it's great <laughs> to see her go back to her roots. She's so busy, you know, but she's still able to. We got like four episodes without them mentioning it, so it was about yeah. time we went back. Uh, let's get into the episode, I suppose. Well, let's go to the episode. Mm-hmm. I'll let you take it. All right, big, we're gonna open dive. at home. R and B is with Marky Mark. And uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they can't get this frozen ice cream out of the carton, and they've bent about six spoons trying to make this happen. So that's a it's a huge uh, canister of frozen ice cream. Yeah, that's huge con- container. I guess is, is a better word. But man, it is like industrial size. It's like what they would have at an ice cream shop. Yeah, that's what I saw at Kilwins the other day when I got some nice raspberry sorbet and a waffle cone. If you know what I mean. I don't. I don't know what any of those things are, <laughs> except for waffle cone. <laughs> all right. So uh, apparently, this happens a lot. Um, this is an issue that the boys encounter all the time. But we do learn, in seconds later, that Jill is giving a speech at the library opening. So all that fundraising paid off, and uh, she's rewarded by having to give a speech. That's, that stress. Yeah. <laughs> what, what a reward it is. Stress and work. Yeah, that really worked well for her before. She spent days and days worrying about it, but. Um, You know, she feels more confident this time, and uh, everybody's kind of getting ready to leave. I think Jill's getting ready to leave, and the boys are very suspicious. They got their hands behind their back. There's a couple of jokes um, saying that they're just trying something new, and it's nice Mm -hmm. and refreshing. Uh, But then we see that Dad comes in. He fixed the broken ice cream scoop, or improved it, if you will. He uh, crossed it. He he hybridized it. That's not a word, but I made it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, With a curling iron. Yeah. Uh, can you guess what's going to happen? I mean, it played out a little differently than I thought. <laughs> what did you but... expect? Wait, what did you think was going to happen? I mean, I guess I was sus- I was expecting... A fire? I guess I thought he'd get electrocuted somehow. <laughs> I don't know. You just wanted him to die. At I, this just, point. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know what I was expecting necessarily, but it did play out a little bit differently than I expected. So well done, Howard J. Morris. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess we should describe it. He puts the scoop into the ice cream, and his, you know, it's it, it's so powerful that it glides all the way through the ice cream, and his hand pokes through the container. Mm. So it's 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 uh, you could say it had more power than it did before. 
<laughs> you could say that. Well, I, I noticed you liked to just skip over the fact that uh, smooth R and B had uh, bent a lot of spoons in their process. You know, there's there's like twelve spoons. That's I already said that. <laughs> I didn't hear. You. I didn't. You didn't mention how many spoons. So I said. Uh, I said at least five or six each. Uh, let's more, go right? to the videotape. Du- double, du- <laughs> double that. Uh, double this, double that, double, double this, that. Uh, <laughs> oh boy! Uh, it's uh, what did I write here? What did you write there? In intra in nothing. <laughs> it's not, a nothing it's now. a weekly thing lately that you get lost or can't read your notes. And you know what's so interesting is I ju- like I just watched this. Episode. I just took these notes probably twenty minutes ago. But you're fried. Oh, I, th- oh, I think I I think I wrote. That oh I, oh I wrote that I was the scoop thing interesting effect I was impressed by the ice cream interesting scoop going thing yeah I'm I uh I don't know you're how, hit or miss with these effects how sometimes. do you think how do you think they did that do you I mean like how they do it what do you mean he just like shoved his hand through yeah but like that's not that would be kind of hard to do it's like, not ice cream like, uh. But how does he get his hand? You think that they had, like, softened the container and that they just made it easier for him to kind of bust through? Because, like, that would be kind of difficult to just work your hand through a regular ice cream container. Yeah, my guess is it's something that's thinner and closer to, like, paper or something like that. Interesting. Okay. Well, it was, it was one of the better effects I've seen <laughs> of late. I've, for whatever reason, I was very impressed by it. It was, so. it was fantastic. All right, so All that's right, the opening scene. scene. Why don't you just take a break and I'll, I'll, I'll please, step in here. Please, please. Tell me uh, how many spoons uh, they bent again. I was uh, upwards of 12. <laughs> Nigh upon a baker's dozen. Uh, we're at Harry's Hardware, which is going to be our new stomping grounds, and they are working hard to solidify that. Mm-hmm. Al is manning the register, so apparently all the trouble from last week is just kind of, you know. He's still he's still a not-so-silent partner, isn't he? It, that is true, but Harry seems more chill with it. Uh, he's working the register, and he's handling some money. And uh, okay, did you did you remember this guy from before? Eddie, Eddie, Eddie the mechanic, of course. You, yeah, you see, were so excited it, about him. I know, but until my second watch, I was not able to connect the dots. Oh man, and he really ups the ante. Uh, it's funny because like I was like, I watched it yesterday, and I was like, I like this guy. And then today, I was like, Oh yeah, I like this guy. A couple episodes ago too. This is Eddie the mechanic. You like him so much that you don't remember who he is every He's time. He's great. Yeah, I, I mean, I think he really brings the heat here. I, I like what Eddie what Eddie uh, does in this episode. So yeah. Uh, they're all just kind of. There's no Benny, uh, which was maybe all right. He's probably around. he's probably looking for a job or something. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, they are just kind of. There's a lot of banter, and Tim he walks in. He has a video camera, and he needs uh, like a screw or something to fix it. He's just come from Jill's speech, and he's recorded it. Um, and there's a kind of a funny gag about Tim asking why everyone waves at cameras when they're on, which is. Seemed kind of true to life. I mean, I guess we don't really have video cameras anymore. One of do some of that remember. Seinfeld observational humor, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is yeah, this is definitely a very Seinfeld Seinfeldian. Feels episode like it for, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when uh, Al makes fun of uh, Harry's froggy voice. That's totally a Jerry move. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, except you find a clever way to actually do it. Whereas <laughs> Al's just like fr- froggy. <laughs> um, yeah. So. They're waving at the camera. Tim thinks he sets the camera down and turns it off, but uh, we won't figure this out until later, but the camera's still rolling. Oh, no. Hence uh, the title of the episode. And these guys, they start talking about how boring their wives are. Boy, things get and, really out of oh, hand. Oh, man. They are like, it's it's one up, one upsmanship time, you know, times a thousand. They're just going to the max about how boring their wives are. They're talking about... Uh, pillows and fabrics and uh just it's just they're cracking each other up it's it their their wives are so boring uh and so mundane and so awful and uh al just can't believe it yeah al says uh everything that eileen says is riveting to him and then they say it's because you're the boring one yeah poor poor al they, they end with uh there's like a joke about how when their wives are really boring they just kind of uh nod and sort of mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. and they do that dial a bunch of times and it's pretty friggin funny yeah their uh yeah their thing is no one is as boring as my wife um, yeah not not great not great for any of these guys unfortunately no, no unfortunately no. tim's wife is going to be the only one who sees it so yeah seriously uh i gotta give us credit for no one doing the like a bore at my wife during during that uh, scene, <laughs> that used... odds were. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was your go-to early on that... in the run. So. I know I had to show some real restraint, but I did it. Uh, next scene, 
they are watching the tape, and they being Tim, Jill, Al, and Eileen. Well, yeah, it's we- we- it's weird that Al and Eileen are so interested. Yeah, in they kind of set this up the early in the scene before, where Al and Eileen were really interested in this three-hour speech that Jill is giving. Yeah. So, and Al, Al has also already gone to bat saying that Jill is a is a strong public speaker. Strong. And how how he knows that? Well, he he watched the videotape of all the other ones. <laughs> he watched. He watched the last episode, Jill's speech, or the one where wasn't there an episode a couple of years ago where she was like really nervous yes. about giving a speech? And it's it, probably him, for the library fundraiser. It probably was. Uh, so yeah, they're watching it. Tim's sleeping. Eileen and Al are crying as it comes to a close. Jill is quoting uh, just a fantastic poem. Uh, it's terrible. The quote is so bad, and I think it was supposed to be kind of poignant. I don't know. I don't remember what it was, but it's basically like books books basically it just says books a bunch of times which is appropriate for a library but yeah it's by a very popular uh poet as well elizabeth barrett browning um yes i i don't know maybe maybe we just didn't have the whole three hour context if we could get our hands (laughs) on that videotape uh perhaps that that might bring it up a few notches for us yeah i uh i would love to watch a a three hour (laughs) cut of, of her of her speech i unlike al i don't think that jill's a riveting public speaker uh but you know to each their own so the 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 tape kind of conveniently the tape just keeps running. The speech mm. ends and instead of hitting stop, they just kind of let it keep going. And you know we all know where this is headed. Uh, and Tim's so far away he couldn't possibly stop it. He, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just kind of stands there helpless. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's the same stuff we just saw except a much shorter version of it. Mm-hmm. Did you notice that? Yeah. How, like the last scene went on much longer than what we see here so they definitely you know somehow there was some some bits sort of edited out Mm -hmm. but uh jill sees it she's frustrated she's upset and she's angry al and eileen promptly leave yes very wise very wise tim begs them to stay and (laughs) suggests maybe they stay the night yeah and there's there's mention of like tim doesn't immediately handle it especially well he kind of uh doesn't he plays it off like it's not a big deal. Yeah, he's, like, he I, says, like... I suppose you want to talk about this, you know, whatever. Yeah, and he's, um... Yeah, he he says things like, it's not what I feel about you, it's just what I say, stuff like that. Um, yeah. You know. Guy talk. Guy, guy talk. talk. Boys just, being boys. Just some locker room talk, if you know what I mean. Uh, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, Jill Jill does not go for that. And, uh, it's, yeah. it's perhaps one of the most moments, worst moments for, uh, Tim in a while. Definitely in, I would say, in the Hall of Fame for him. Really? Yeah, I guess I didn't really think about it in that context. But yeah, he at this point in the episode, he does seem like a... Yeah, he's not looking very favor, favorable. Um, this is kind of a side note, but I was thinking... So, camcorders and videotapes and stuff... Mm. Uh, I, I, if I've said this on air before, then please stop me and we'll just edit this out. <laughs> but I was thinking with like, uh, you know, like Facebook and social media and whatever, uh, you kind of don't, you don't really find yourself in the position where you have to watch videotapes of things like this. Like I remember when I was young, people would go on vacations and they would come back and they would want to show me like pictures of their vacation. Mm-hmm. Or God forbid they'd want to show me like a, a video of it. And it was just feigning interest was nearly impossible, especially when I was young. I'd have a tough time with it now, probably too. But that doesn't that just doesn't occur anymore. Do you uh do you remember that at all? Yeah, see that I don't remember that a lot. You know, mostly you know, people were just trying to show me Michael J. Fox movies. <laughs> it's true. You guys you guys had a pretty strict no VHS tapes in the house that don't have MJF. Either that yeah. or uh Robin Williams and Flubber, I think. Right, true. <laughs> That's about it. No, I don't I don't remember a lot of videotapes like this. I mean there were a couple <sighs> We we got some of like from middle school basketball and stuff like yeah. that, but not yeah. really vacation like. Since okay. my dad took a lot of pictures, you know, he's a photographer. Right. Um, it was a lot more of like here's my photo album, more okay. than videos. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those were scattered all over our house. Um, right. And yeah. and to this day, they're everywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, um, I don't know that he forced them on people. <laughs> Perhaps he did. Do you do you know the, do you understand the the phenomena that I'm describing though? Yeah, I mean people. I mean I'm I think I've seen it in like old TV shows as like yeah. slideshows and yeah, stuff like and that. It's like and it's like supposed to be like the lowest form of human interaction. Like it's like torturous mm-hmm. to watch a slideshow of someone's vacation. Yeah, I feel like I experienced that a lot. It's very so true to know, life for you. Yeah, I don't know. We grew up in the same town. It's odd that our experiences would be so. We different, didn't run but... in the same circles though. 
No, and and you've never like you didn't really know anyone that went on vacations to speak of, Mm-mm. probably as well. Like, people people that you were friends with, they just didn't really travel. You know? Stayed home. They stayed in the Flynn area. Uh, figured <laughs> That's that no where, vacation. That was where all the good stuff was going on. <laughs> <laughs> all right next scene uh tool time it's rock and roll day and heidi's gonna such, do it's, it's a real afterthought it's much like halloween in the last episode they they really uh they screwed this out this uh rock and roll thing up i would say oh well i can't wait to hear what you would have done uh so heidi is wearing an outfit that would be fit for the musical grease basically <laughs> yeah. um she's got the long skirt and she starts dancing she does the whole thing she introduces the show so she i imagine she keeps dancing and dancing and dancing because she's sick of just saying does everybody know what time it is <laughs> she's like i'm on camera and i'm gonna make it yeah count. she wants some screen time so she dances a little bit until tim and al shoo her away they come out with these really cool short sleeve <laughs> collar, collar shirts on and some glasses this is, uh i mean like uh I don't know who did the costumes for this episode, but this is what you do for rock and roll. It looks this like a the, bowling alley shirt. It's just a bowling shirt. Yeah. They're wearing like Wayfarer sunglasses, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're each wearing bowling shirts. Uh, Al's is, is flannel, like regular pants, like black pants and then like not Converse shoes, but like almost Converse. But the <sighs> shirt is, they really blew it on this outfit. I gotta yeah. say that. It's that's where strange. the bulk of my complaining comes in. Like it's rock and roll. Like, Someone should be dressed up as Elvis. Who doesn't have you a know? leather jacket on? Come on. Why aren't, yeah, leather jacket. Somebody maybe does like a Buddy Holly thing with the sunglasses or the, you know, the, the regular glasses. Yeah. But like, they're just wearing bowling shirts. Like, how lazy. There is like a very small pin on the like lapel or the collar uh, that is like a golden hammer. I don't know why oh, they did that, that, but I did notice that. I was... Yeah, I just don't understand why this is rock and roll. But, um, you know, Al takes it one step higher. He starts impersonating Elvis. Lots of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like a rockin' chair and a rockin' whatever. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to do the voice because that's kind of your territory. <laughs> <laughs> many, many years ago it was. But, I'm not, but I, too, am not going to do the voice. So, so the keep, whole thing is they're working on rocking chairs, so... You, yeah. you can draw the connection here. Tim goes off script almost immediately. He's, he's He wants to vent uh, kind of like Al did, was it last episode or two episodes yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, shameless publicity. Yeah, this is not so shameless this time. Uh, he goes straight to the crowd and he's like, men need a place to vent, right? To talk about their wives and all this kind of stuff. Audience initially claps and then Tim appeals to direct audience members asking them, where do you vent about your wife? First guy says divorce court, which got a laugh yeah. out of me. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good bit. Yeah. And then the second guy was in he's like j- he was like he's like where do you where do you go if you want to talk to a bunch of guys or where's the last place you went to talk to a bunch of guys? And the guy's like Jackson State Penitentiary. <laughs> so so uh, he he realized this is backfiring and kind of right. immediately backs down. Uh, yeah, I liked it. It was funny. I didn't expect it to to play out that way, mm-hmm. and uh, that never happens on this show. I mean, usually I see things coming a mile away, <laughs> with the exception of that sweet. Uh, special effect with the ice cream. I was going to say, on. this episode's two for two and surprising yeah. you. I was shocked. I mean, <laughs> I continued to be shocked throughout this one. But yeah, I did I did think that this was a, a funny little turn here. Yeah. And, he, and he immediately, you know, he puts the car in reverse and he, he backs out. He's, he's not going any further down that you road. You know what else is a funny little turn? Watching, uh, watching Al work on this little leg chair on this wood lathe. Mm-hmm. That's a funny little turn, isn't it? Well, over and turn. O- over and over again. Uh, you know, Tim wants to talk about safety this is uh obviously something that could be dangerous he walks out front and he's talking about how you shouldn't be wearing loose clothes or anything like that a tie and then a shirt flies off uh again i was surprised at this not a shirt his shirt his flies sh- off <laughs> yeah not, it's not just any shirt tim is now shirtless uh, and he doesn't realize yeah he, he, he says, didn't realize it took him it took him a while to figure it out which the crowd starts laughing and he says let me finish a little far-fetched maybe um yeah i mean it looks like he's been working out. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, I mean, did this surprise you too? I mean, I just wasn't ready for it. I've seen the I've seen the uh, gif a bunch of times online. Mm. So when I saw that they were both in their really cool bowling shirts, <laughs> you I knew something was about myself, to I, I was kind of prepared for this, but I had you know it, it's it's good for the ladies out there. <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm sure they were all in the time very appreciative of it and hey i didn't mind it uh <laughs> even this morning so yeah hey good good interesting turn 
three for three on twists. Ooh, twist, rock and roll twist, twist and shout, something like that. Yeah, 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 definitely. I, I think you, I think you're onto something with that. <laughs> you know, and that's how this. That's how the scene ends. That's how it ends. We're gonna go to the next scene, which is outside. Uh, yeah, and Jordan, this is typically where we play a clip, and I think that we will continue on with that tradition. We oughta. Right here, right now. Hey, Wilson. I do hold it, Brett. Can you do me a favor? <laughs> Tim is running late. I have a psychology class. Can you keep an eye on the kids for me again? Well, that'll be my pleasure, Jill. By the way, how did that Elizabeth Barrett Browning poem I gave you work out? Not too well with Tim. After he taped my speech, he accidentally taped himself making fun of me at the hardware store. Oh, I guess I can expect Tim out here pretty soon. (laughs) I doubt it. He didn't even think he did anything wrong. He said he was only doing what all guys do when they get together. Well, Jill, the renowned psychiatrist, Irvin D. Yalom, postulated that men relieve their isolation by bonding over common fears and experience. Oh, please. Yalom was talking about universality as it applies to formal therapy, not a bunch of guys sitting around dumping on their wives. <laughs> well, that, that, that's an excellent point. <laughs> However, knowing Tim as I do, I'm sure it was just an innocent exchange bearing no real malice. <laughs> As Freud so humorously pointed out, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. That is such a crock. (laughs) As Carl Jung says, if people can be educated to see the lowly side of their own natures, then they might also understand their fellow man or woman better. Well, with all due respect to Carl Jung, I believe it was Bruno Bettelheim. Oh, don't Bettelheim me. (laughs) Tim was talking about me behind my back, and you know what Andrea Dworkin says about that. Oh, actually, I don't. She says that if women talk about people behind their backs, they call it gossip. But if men do it, it's male bonding. <laughs> you know, Jill, ever since you decided to go back to school, you've made things so very, very hard on me. All right, so we've got something a little bit different here. Jill comes out instead of Tim. Uh... I was just thinking, uh, <laughs> I don't know how, like, every time it's not Tim, we're always like, Whoa, it really subverted audience expectations. But, like, they've had Jill come out, like, five times at this point. No, like, three. Three, Al's been there uh, once. The boys have been there twice. And Jill's been there three times. So, hey, five out of 81, that's a small amount. (laughs) All right, fine, fine, fine. Carry on. It's all about perspective. Uh, So... Jill wants Al, or Al, Wilson. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> this is a, Pump the brakes. talk about I'm, subversion. I miss that. Uh, oh, gosh. Jill oh, asks Wilson uh, to do a favor, keep an eye on the kids. And then they start kind of sparring over. Uh, yeah, I wrote psychology off. Yeah, and that's what it yeah. was. They went back and forth. Jill really gives Wilson what for, I would say. Because yeah. Wilson initially is trying to. He's actually kind of dismissive of it. Yeah, he's trying to almost, um, you know, justify Tim's behavior Mm -hmm. here. So Jill just fires back uh, with adding more context to what he says, even teaches Wilson a thing or two. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jill definitely wins. For sure. For sure. Uh, Basically, it comes down to, you know, if girls were to talk about men behind their back, it would be called gossip. But uh, when men do it, it's called male bonding. So. Double standard, and she's not going to stand for it. So Wilson, Wilson oddly is kind of standing for it, though. You know, it's kind of, kind of weird. Very out of character for him to sort of. He, yeah, he just kind of plays it off. I did like it early in the scene when Jill explains the situation, and uh, Wilson says, "Oh, I expect to see Tim pretty soon." Though. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was funny. Uh, but yeah, she she defeats him, and uh, with that in mind, I, I think we should. I mean, I guess we got to do a Wilsonometer reading. Yeah, we better break out the uh, the measuring devices. Yeah, so I uh, actually put some WD-40 on the hinges of my uh, oh, well, osometer case. It might case, be a little so bit quieter. Yeah, it's not going to... Yeah, it was a little quieter as I opened it, so... Uh, yeah, I'll do my reading first. Um, I'm going to give him... It, you know, it's 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 cold. <sighs> 10 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> I uh yeah. All I can tell you right now is that my thermometer is surrounded by ice. Yeah, yeah, I figured as much. And yeah. uh, I, I give it a reading of, like, negative 30. Yeah, I didn't know we could go below zero, but the rules do keep changing on this uh, <laughs> this really successful. Uh, this uh, <laughs> you asked for a great new idea. I didn't, I, and I didn't want a new idea, so yeah. I, I mean, I think it's, it's pretty self-evident here. Yeah, like she schools him in a in a psych off, 
and he's also sort of defending what Tim has done. I'm only giving him 10 because uh, I liked what he said about expecting Tim to come out soon. So, yeah, it's it's muddled, and, uh, yeah, he, he, he just gets schooled. It's taken to, he gets taken to school, for lack all, of a better term. All hail Jill as our commissar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, you know, the, the, the feminists, they got their claws in this episode. They yeah, sure Jill, did. Jill, Jill, Jill won the battle. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's our Wilson scene. Um, Jill's learned a lot in Psych 101. You know, like, she, I would she's almost been say studying. she's... Yeah, I mean a lot apparently though, based on this this scene. Well, She's, this is important to her, and we'll find out later that it's important yeah. to her. So, uh, inside later on, smooth R and B, they're working you know some it. they're working some magic tricks. Uh, <laughs> what was this all about? Like, it's it, it, I was like waiting for something to come of it, but basically, Randy does a cool magic trick, and Brad's like. How'd you do it? And then that's it. <laughs> Sir Larry uh, taught Randy yeah. a few things or right. two back. That'd be sweet if they. It'd be sweet if they were like, "You remember that magician we locked in a box a couple of years ago?" Yeah, he showed me something. He came yeah. back and showed me a few things. Uh, Mark comes down with a videotape. The videotape. Uh, the you, titular was this. This is the titular videotape. That's correct. And mm-hmm. he snuck it out of his parents' bedroom after hearing the fight or something to that effect. Uh, and uh, the boys, the smooth R and B boys, I should say, mm-hmm. yeah. not Marky Mark. Uh, they're impressed with their little brother here. They're like, "Hey, if you turn, if you keep this up, it turns out you might be a real person." Yeah, and and he says, "I'd like to be a real person." <laughs> Mark, not dissimilar from uh, Pinocchio <laughs> uttering the famous line, uh, "I'm a real boy." I'm a real or, boy. I want to be something along those lines. Uh, yeah, Mark is 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 not entirely different from that. And he, he also has another couple of qualities that he shares with Pinocchio in that they're both very wooden. Hmm. Didn't see that one coming. Uh, so the boys watch their dad be a terrible example, basically. Yeah. Uh, Tim comes in, tells him to shut it off. Uh, he says he wasn't making fun of mom. He was making fun of his wife and tries uh, laughably to explain the difference. But yeah. The boys don't it's get a, it. It's, an, it's nonsense. Yeah, it's nonsense. They are responding appropriately because what their father is saying is it, it doesn't doesn't follow any logic yeah and i mean this scene make, makes sense to me because at this point tim still doesn't really understand what he did and uh you know if he can't explain it to little children then he's wrong How does he not understand what he did i don't know he's being a real dummy yeah real dummy here right? real dummy bring out those uh ventriloquist dummies from earlier I mean, maybe Tim is more like Pinocchio than Mark. That's right. If he's being a real dummy. Give Marky Mark some credit. Yeah, I will. He, he's almost going to be a real person. <laughs> I was thinking as I watched this, uh, you know, in later seasons, Mark's going to make, like, some videos, some some short films. Oh, maybe yeah. This, maybe this was uh, a catalyst for This that. is what got him into that, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's a... It's a theory. It is a theory. It's a working theory. Oh. When we write our reboot, I'm going to have Mark be, like, uh, a famous director. There you go. Hey, don't give any spoilers to that. And Andy, darling, yeah, these are free ideas. I don't know. What, what am I doing? Jeez. Yeah. All, right. All right. Jill comes in. The boys bounce almost as quickly as Al and Eileen did earlier in this episode. It's good to see the boys have a lot to do in this episode. Yeah, a little bit more than they have, I guess. Okay, guys. Yes. The, no. I, I was thinking the boys have been a real uh, afterthought this season. You yeah, know? there hasn't really been a plot focused no. on them, has there? I know. It, it's kind of always like that in the show, I feel like, where they'll get in. You'll have like a five or six episode run that will heavily involve the boys, and then they'll kind of forget about them or feel like they don't need to use them. And we're kind of in the uh, a different stretch of that right now. So. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Tim attempts to apologize. Um, he's, you know, his excuse basically is, you know me, I, I get to... L- I get people laughing at me, and I want to get on a roll, and I like all the attention, all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, Jill's not going to let him off the hook here. She says, you know what made me really mad was you not being supportive of my psychology passion, all that kind of stuff. The fight is still unresolved, and we're what both of us are left wondering, how will Tim possibly reconcile this? <laughs> I honestly thought, is this the one they break up? Do they, is this a divorce episode? Are they done? Is the show over? Because I don't see uh, a way forward. The end of a tunnel. No, yeah. No way forward. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And this is roll credits fade to black. This was it. This is it. Uh, this is a two parter. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I mean, there's got to there's be a two parter at some point. Oh, there I are. Can't, I can't wait for that. Yeah, we're going to have some cliffhangers coming. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, yeah, so that's it. We uh, later that day, I uh, assume, and Tim has he's he's reading Jill's psychology textbook, 
And Jill is surprised. She says, you don't have to do that. And he says, I want to. I want to understand why you like this stuff so much. He's already read two chapters, much of it involving female sexuality. And animal uh, sexuality. And animal sexuality, which hey, probably equally interesting to Tim. Uh, <laughs> Tim said, that, though, the animal sexuality was missing some pictures. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> it's a very strange line. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, they, uh, Jill is charmed. Tim promises he's going to take her to the opera, or, as he has many times before. And <laughs> she never seems to cash that check. Uh, and uh, I don't know. They they make up, and it's it's very nice. Uh, and she says something at the end about like, "What's your <laughs> fantasy?" And I got some questions for you on this. He says, "What is your fantasy?" She says, "What is your fantasy involved?" And he says, "Twins." And a yo-yo. Well, I know who the yo-yo is. <laughs> well, I mean, she's, yeah, Jill says the yo-yo is Tim. But it's one what of the. It? It's like that. Poly what does that one, mean? It's like that parrot joke. They're just. It uh, is they like leave the you parrot hanging. joke. I mean, like. I, okay, it reminded me of. Uh, I can't. Is it? I don't know if it's Black Sheep or it's Tommy Boy. I think it's Black Sheep. And there's this scene where he's making cold calls on behalf of his brother who's running for governor or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's, I don't know, they kind of cut it up a little bit, but he's like, whips chains, whistles, yo-yos. I don't know, (laughs) this made me think of that. Uh, And I like that better, but I don't know what Tim's getting at with twins and a yo-yo. I, uh, you know, I was a little afraid to think too much about it. Did you, did you look it up? Did you look, is there, is that like a, (laughs) did I Google twins and yo-yo? Yeah. Is it like a fetish or something? Maybe we'll, we should put it out to to the listenership and see if, see what I certainly don't want to, uh, put that on my browser history. (laughs) Sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's a a family computer now. Uh, it's at least a work computer. So, uh, 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 yeah. Last scene, Jordan, I, we haven't, we didn't talk about this, but this could be clip worthy. I don't know. Is it? I don't know. It's pretty good. Yeah, I, it's funny. Yeah, well, let's, okay. let's play a clip. All right, cool. Oh, no. What have you taped now? More pearls of wisdom from the hardware store? Mm. No. Actually, I went back and looked at the tape. There was a whole second part of the conversation you never even saw. You should take a look at it. I don't think so. I've seen enough. No, really. Come over here. Take a look at this. You know, Harry, on second thought, I really did enjoy my wife's speech. <laughs> you take this five minutes later? Yeah. You're wearing different clothes. <laughs> Men in hardware stores change frequently. <laughs> T- tool man, you have shown me the way. Because of you, I now realize how much I love talking to my wife about her needs. <laughs> That is realistic dialogue. No man, you are the greatest. You have shown me the love that I have for my wife. Oh man, your W's look like M's. That's why I said wife. Your W's do look like M's. Well, it's good that we got in touch with our true feelings because I certainly didn't mean to hurt my wife, and I, I hope that she knows that. Yeah, yeah, she knows that. Tool man, you are the greatest. <laughs> I am so happy to be your wife. Tim arrives home and uh, he, he mentions to Jill that, uh, you know, she should have kept watching the tape because uh, there was more. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, you know, she's like, I don't think so. I, I'm pretty sure I saw everything. He puts it in. And uh, what what happens is Tim Tim kind of continues the tape. He tries to re-record what happened with uh, Harry and Eddie, and it's uh, it's sort of a staged apology, as you heard. And, and they're kind of standing around, and it, it, Tim has written up a script, and, and it, it's pretty good. Uh, Eddie's, <laughs> Eddie and Harry are very very poor actors, and the dialogue is Harry is, is uh, particularly uh, stiff. Tool man, you have shown me the way. And they like fake punch each other. Um, it, it's uh, yeah. I, I wanted to play the clip just because it is funnier than we could make it sound uh but yeah jill is uh she's charmed by it and then she kind of makes fun of the dialogue as well and uh gives him a a little little punch in the shoulder and uh that's it roll credits fade to black let's go to the videotape all all is well uh yeah all's well that ends well on, on home improvement yeah we didn't see a way forward but tim did just read that book
All he had to do was was read for a half hour and then go waste time at the hardware store with his friends and, and record a little little something. But uh, Jordan, curious to hear your thoughts on this episode. Highs and lows. I actually didn't mind this episode very much. Um, the first time I watched it, I hated it. But the second time, I I didn't mind it as much. I just I liked the way that they empowered Jill in this episode. I guess um, like she was able to shut Wilson up and uh, be mad at Tim for a long time. And you know, Tim's apology really is just his effort. Um, he's not so articulate with words, and, um, so I guess, you know, it was, it's a little weird to us that the apology and the resolution came kind of quickly, and there wasn't much there, but he obviously was putting in a bunch of effort, and that's what Jill took from that. Um, as far as, like, the accident on Tool Time, uh, and the accident at home, I mean, I know you were surprised, and, uh, and that, that's certainly a high, uh, but I did like, like, when his shirt flew off, and I liked the bit where he, Tim appeals to the audience, uh, and they, you know, one of them says divorce court, one of them says jail, uh, stuff like that, so it really wasn't too bad for me, it, obviously this is Tim being an idiot, um, but one of the better episodes where Tim is an idiot, so one of the more watchable ones for me. But uh, what what were your overall thoughts? Well, I loved it when Tim's shirt came off. Uh, I, I knew start, I knew that you were going to say that. that. Super high. No, Super high. I, uh, I I think that this is a, a pretty good episode. Yeah, um, it's it's funny. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of different sections of it that are funny, which is unique for episodes of late. Definitely, I I too uh, I thought the end I thought the final like the staged video thing with those three guys was really funny. Uh, I was getting some some solid laughs out of that. Like you mentioned, the appealing to the audience and then getting nothing in return. The guy is in prison or the other guy's divorce was good. And I also, there was another good bit. I, the Wilson the Wilson line was funny. I just, throughout this episode, there were m- several good lines, which mm-hmm. we don't always get. So uh, it was funny. I like Tim kind of, uh, Tim's turn is, um, how would I say, I guess rushed as it so often is. But I do like the scene where he's reading the textbook and they're making up and uh, the final scene as well. And the rock and roll stuff is <laughs> probably the low for me just because, like, I, I don't – there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of a lot of things you can do with rock and roll. And I think putting them in bowling shirts uh, and, and doing something with a rocking chair is probably not the best use of that, although I did think that the shirt coming off was funny. But, yeah, that just kind of seemed like they uh, – they blew an opportunity there. I guess but, that's probably why they didn't do a leather jacket, because the shirt couldn't have flew, flown off. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Should have done a leather shirt. You know, ties in. <laughs> le- le- Tim is like a leather daddy? Um, uh, no, I like, I like this episode. It's funny. Uh, it's definitely one of the better ones we've covered of late. And, yeah. uh, it's... Uh, when it, when we started watching it, I was like, "Is this going to be just like the speech one?" Because like, it, it, yeah, like it very much has the same formula, and it starts in a similar manner. But uh, this one kind of diverted in a different direction, and uh, yeah. I was I was all all too happy to to have that happen. So yeah, overall, pretty good episode. Yeah, and I you know I expected obviously the videotape to be shown and them to get into a fight, but I think the way it ended up playing out afterward and the resolution was just a little bit different than what I expected. So. Uh, so that's episode 81. Let's go to the videotape, or the visiotape, I guess. Uh, let's move on to Sean's social media roundup. Let's do it. if you want to reach out to us, you can do so at thehomeandpodcast.com. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash homeandpodcast, and Twitter at homeandpodcast. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so for free by just leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can support the show for as little as a dollar a month by going to patreon.com slash home and podcast. Uh, you give us your your money, we make a podcast. So what's better than that? Adam, talk to me about Twitter. Let's talk Twitter, Jordan. Uh, well, you just you took one of my tweets that I uh, put on, on the feed today and you said it, and that was uh, related to Patreon. Uh, yeah. Continuing to, to look for donations, if uh, if you're willing to give even just a little bit, it helps us uh, yeah make make better podcasts definitely. So uh, in, you know we just dropped a, we're recording this on a Wednesday, so the episode's just dropped. So I'm not going to talk about the poll this week, but on Sunday I did uh, I did solicit um, by way of this tweet, I, and I asked, can anyone find a connection between a Best Picture nominee and Home Improvement? 
degrees of separation type stuff. Uh, if not, then no sweat. Hashtag Oscar. A couple people responded. So uh, at Tom Bauer said, Tim Allen starred in uh, the Toy Story trilogy with Tom Hanks, who is in the Best Picture nominee, The Post. Another person said, Tim Allen starred in Galaxy Quest with Sam Rockwell, who was in Three Billboards and who won Best Supporting Actor. And uh, another one was, Patricia Richardson was on six episodes of The West Wing, which I've mentioned, which starred Allison Janney, who won Best Supporting Actress from I, Tanya. I, Tanya wasn't technically nominated for Best Pictures, so uh, that one didn't count. But, uh, <laughs> You're I was a real stickler. I saw I that. I was appreciative <laughs> of it, nonetheless. Uh, so, yeah, that was, that was kind of fun. And I think today... Anything new? Uh, Mark Volbeck reached out uh, with regards to us talking about Tim crossing the border and going into Canada. And he said, back in the day, you could cross the border with nothing but a birth certificate. Simpler times. Mm. So, yeah, uh, continue to follow us on Twitter. Reach out. Tweet at us. And uh, we're just having a ball. We sure are. Just having a a ball on the Internet. You know, the Internet can be a, a dark, scary Sad kind of place, but not you know, with us. We just, we, just, we just have a good time. We, we do. Just have a good time. It's just yeah. good old fashioned time. Uh, I did want to say my mom did respond to your Michael J. Fox barbs, and Michael uh, J. Fox barbs. What did I say? <laughs> I think you were just uh, you know disparaging the the family with all of their. I, no, I was no, I was surprised that your parents had a Madonna CD, and I remain surprised. Mm, well, she did. I mean, she responded to the Michael J. Fox comments. Okay, right. so. just, chose, just chose one thing. What'd she say? It's <laughs> just one at a time. Uh, she said Michael J. Fox is always relevant, always, uh, and will be on upcoming episodes of Designated Survivor, a show that I used to watch and no longer do. So, <laughs> you know, I I don't want to I don't want to poke fun at your mom, but I would argue that what she's there's two different things going on there. You can't argue Michael J. Fox is relevant and then tell me he's going to be on the show Designated Survivor, <laughs> which is very, very irrelevant. Mm. Uh, happy to have you listening, Laura. Good to have you. Good to have you. Uh, good to have you on board. But I'm, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Hey, at least your mom listens. That's all I'll say. That's right. That's right. All right. Um, so that's that leaves me to the question of the week. I believe it's my turn. It is 100% your turn, yeah. Uh, In this episode, there was a very strange joke that we never really got resolution to. That is twins and yo-yos. I want to focus on the yo-yo, because that was kind of a nostalgic piece of our childhood. Uh, And I'm wondering, were you part of that yo-yo craze? I think your questions are (laughs) always kind of... Exactly like this one. You've really settled into a certain kind of question. I'm uh, predictable and in a groove. Yeah. All right. Have I? What was the exact wording that you used? Was I? Were you a part of the yo-yo the, craze? A part of it? Yeah, I was a part of it. I wasn't. You were like, kind of the ringleader, weren't you? You know, I'm not like. Uh, I wouldn't say. You know, I'm not like Duncan. You know, the the guy that started the yo-yo uh, craze, <laughs> like Mr. Duncan, Mr. Duncan's toy chest. Yeah. Uh, I thought you were I just had, like talking about someone named Duncan for a second. I'm not, you know, I'm not Duncan. You know, Duncan. Uh, Everyone knows Duncan. <laughs> you know, Duncan, the great yo-yo artist uh <laughs> no like a sandwich artist i i owned a couple of yo-yos uh i couldn't i mean i like the idea of them and i'd play around with them a little bit but i never got very what very kind good. of tricks could you do i mean none you couldn't like, do I any don't... you couldn't even put the yo-yo to sleep come on no what about <laughs> uh, also no, okay so here's the thing i couldn't do any of those tricks and like i kind of like felt bad about it i was like man i because like i was like i had my parents buy me like this nice yo-yo yeah and i was like trying to do tricks with it and i could never do it and i always like kind of felt guilty about it like man i must be really bad because everybody else has this yo-yo and they can do (laughs) tricks now i take like i'm kind of proud of my inability to do much with the yo-yo because like it's a super lame stupid thing to be good at so like (laughs) the fact that i couldn't the fact that i couldn't put it to sleep yeah uh, you're damn right. I couldn't. Put it to sleep. I couldn't do anything with it. Uh, uh, Adam, all I could do I gotta was say, put it down and bring it back up. You, you got us. You're making it seem like putting a yo-yo to sleep was the hardest thing. Like running, a, I'm, running like I'm a just, four I'm minute not mile. Be put, I'm not going to be put down for. I'm, you're not going to put me down because I couldn't do a yo-yo trick. All right, because yo-yos Ugh. are the antithesis of cool. Uh, all right. Well, so I no, guess Jordan, I was I a lo- loser. Uh, I couldn't do a trick. Well, I, I mean, you know, only if you're framing. You know, only if you're trying to frame yourself as being cool. Are you a loser? Jordan, <laughs> could you do a lot with yo-yo? I'm getting the sense that you could. I didn't spend a lot of time with it, to be honest, but um, I, th- I don't remember how I got my first yo-yo, and then I think someone gave me uh, a yo-yo for a gift. And I find probably, dunk, probably Duncan wanted to sponsor you. No, it wasn't a Duncan one. It was a different one. It was. I guess there were yo-yos that like had 
some way to stay asleep longer. I don't know how they did that. Oh, so you had like a special yo-yo that helped you do tricks. Yeah, well, like into like an athlete taking steroids. Right. Well, I could do both. So I was a little bit all natural and all, you know, I could do. <laughs> you were like Barry Bonds. Like you would have gone to the Hall of Fame <laughs> Either way. without it. But then when you did steroids, it Either really way. your game. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, you know, I spent more time, it sounds like, than you did. But I, I certainly didn't enter any competitions yeah, who cares? or anything. Who cares? I was Yo yoing doesn't matter, so I didn't want to. You know, I don't want to waste any of my time doing it. Our our whole podcast is kind of like a nostalgia trip to the '90s, and it seems like you're really <laughs> mad about that right now. It's very strange. Uh, but yeah, I'm just, I, I could walk I, the dog. I could. I'm not uh, going to be shamed. That's all I'm saying. You could walk the dog. Oh, I could walk the dog. Uh, I could put it to sleep. I could. I don't know what the other trick was. I don't know if it was called I feel like, like a around, cradle. People did something called around the world. Oh yeah, I could I could do that every once in a while, but I certainly yeah. was not a, a prolific yo-yo master. That's for sure. Yeah, you weren't, huh? No. When people tried to talk about yo-yos to me, you know what I said? No, no. <laughs> Jeez. Not not interesting. You're gonna alienate uh, one person in our audience. Yeah, so be I know careful. That there's probably at least one person listening that like takes a lot of pride in their yo-yoing, and if you're out there. Um, I would just say that you shouldn't. Just don't take don't take a lot of pride in it. It's right. like uh, it's like what can I compare it to? Like I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of things like that when you're younger. Like people are just good at certain things and they kind of take pride in it. Uh-huh. And ultimately, it's kind of stupid. Okay, here's another one I could think of. All right. So I remember when we were in middle school and high school, everybody could do the thing with their middle finger where they were like slapping it. Uh, oh my gosh. Ryan Sokob- Ryan Sokobiak is the guy that we graduate with. When I think of Ryan Sokobiak, I just think of him doing this thing with his finger. Do you know, it's like your finger goes dead and you kind of like slap it up against your hand. You yeah, know I know about? what you're talking about. Um, yeah. I could, for instance, I couldn't do that either. And people would be like, you can't do that? I'd be like, no, I can't do that. And I would feel bad. But now it's like, that's the stupidest thing in the world. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I have a master's degree. I don't need to feel bad about these things. Uh, you know what? I have ne- I have a feeling that like a lot of these childhood things really propelled you to uh, to certain heights in your adulthood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I do everything just to to get the haters back. Yeah, you know? yep. Yeah. My hate, my haters fuel me. Mm-hmm. So all right, all right. Uh, I'm really glad I asked that question. I feel like I brought up a lot of um, anger and resentment towards yo-yos for you, and uh, yeah. I it's just, just stu- it's, I mean, they're just stupid. No, it's fine. It's, <laughs> if you like it, then I'm not sorry. But <laughs> then you can kinda, get out. Yeah. You better get out of here. All right. Uh, so with that, we'll uh, look forward to next week. We're going to be covering quibbling siblings. Yeah. Or. Uh... Or Man of the House. Well, Man probably. of the House will uh, will be later this month. So. Oh, interesting. All right. Well, Quibbling Siblings, Man of the House. Hey, you can't go wrong if you're sticking with the podcast. That's right. Uh, as as, it's just like as long as you're not into yo-yos. Yeah, so you're if you're into, into yo-yos, then... I actually, then... Don't want you to, I actually don't want you as a listener. If actually, yo-yos, if, so. you, if you enjoyed yo-yos, if you are mad at Adam right now, please reach out on Twitter. I want to just see some really... Uh, I, see, I see a yo-yo poll in our future. Definitely some controversy coming up. Yeah, so. yeah. That's always good I, for the uh, podcast. Hey, yeah, like we said last week, uh, you know, news is news and publicity is publicity. But yo-yos, uh, yeah, they, they straight up aren't cool. They're no Jordan, it's, it's, been, it's been a pleasure talking to you this Wednesday. <laughs> I look forward to talking to you longer uh, in about uh, Man of the House in a couple of days. And uh, mm. listeners, thank you for listening. Take care, everybody. Take care. <laughs>